In this video, we'll talk about chemokines. Chemokines are small chemoattractant molecules which can recruit cells into, within, or outside the tissue. For the sake of argument, let's say this is a site of infection where you can find many bacteria. And these pathogenic bacteria are engulfed by these dendritic cells, which are phagocytes. This dendritic cell would eventually secrete chemokines shown here in black. And these chemokines would further attract other immune cells, for example, more neutrophils or even more dendritic cells or macrophages into the site of infection. And that would be like an alarming signal or a backup call. So how does these additional immune cells like neutrophils, like macrophages can potentially find the site of infection? So here is the dendritic cell which has secreted the chemokines. Generally speaking, these neutrophils or other immune cells kind of sense the chemokine gradient. And just by sensing the chemokine gradient, they can potentially locate the site of infection. But at a molecular level, how chemokine signaling works? In order to understand, let's zoom into the nu uh, neutrophil and try to understand how chemokine signaling can work. So the chemokine signaling starts when chemokine binds to the chemokine receptor, which is a G-protein coupled receptor. So ligand binding lead to activation of trimeric G protein and it can start different cascades of signal. In one hand, it can activate phospholipase C and ultimately leads to an activation of NF kappa beta and translocation of NF kappa beta into the nucleus. This transcription factor can transcribe many genes, including genes of inflammatory cytokines and many other chemoattractant factors. Also, the G protein couple signaling can activate rho GTPases. Rho GTPases are implicated in cell movement. So obviously cell migration and cytoskeletal rearrangement can be triggered by rho activation. Now G protein couple receptor signaling and chemokine receptor can potentially crosstalk between many signals such as JAK-STAT signal and PI3 AKT signal. And that leads to cell survival. It has been also shown that there is an interaction with MAP kinase pathway and chemokine receptor, which leads to an activation of RAS and eventually make ARC and the whole MAP kinase cascade. This leads to ARC translocation into the nucleus and thereby activating signals which would lead to uh, gene expression. And this category of genes falls onto cell growth, proliferation, and cell survival. Ultimately, Few things are happening due to chemokine signaling. Cell movement, cell survival, proliferation, and survival of these cells. Now let us try to put things in context. Now let's see how chemokine signaling is important for T cells. After its stringent training in the thymus, T cells become naive, the naive T cells leave to the lymph node. Now the naive T cells has chemokine receptors like DC, like CXCR4, CCR7, etc. All these chemokine receptors and corresponding signals allow them to be translocated into the nearby lymph node, where they can interact with further antigen presenting cells like dendritic cells. Now different subtypes of T cells has different kind of chemokine receptors. So in this case, chemokine receptor also work like a signature to identify different cell types. For example, after interaction with the dendritic cell in the lymph node, the T cell would ultimately become, let's say, Th1 cell or Th2 subpopulation based on the polarizing cytokine or the polarizing interleukin it would interact with. Now, both these two different cell types has different kind of chemokine receptors on their surface. Th1 subtype has CXCR3, CXCR1, CXCR2, and CXCR5. Whereas the Th2 subtypes has CCR3, CCR4, CCR2 subtypes. So CCR stands for chemokine receptors. And CCL stands for chemokine ligands. Let us take another example. Let's say this is the site of infection where there are a lot of bacterial invasion. So first the dendritic cell reach there, engulf pathogens and secrete interleukin-8. 
or CXCL8. This was the first discovered chemokine. So this particular chemokine would be sensed by neutrophils, basophils and immature dendritic cells which are in the circulation. This particular signaling helps in extravasation of these lymphocytes into the tissue space and they get recruited into the infection site. Further, the dendritic cell secretes CXCL12 and 14 which help to mobilize more and more dendritic cell into the site of infection. And all of these events lead to a infl in inflammation in that particular region of infection. In context of tumor and cancer biology, chemokine signaling is super important. It turns out there are several chemokines secreted by the tumor cells attracts many immune cells into the tumor region. For example, CXCL12, 9 and 10 attracts cytotoxic T cells and natural killer cells. Note that natural killer cells and cytotoxic T cells has different type of chemokine receptors on their surface. There are other chemokines such as CCL22 and CCL17 that attracts T regulatory cell. There are chemokines like CXCL5, CXCL12 which attracts neutrophils and CCL4, CCL20 attracts dendritic cell. So a complex chemokine signaling is happening in the tumor microenvironment, which help to modulate the immune responses around the tumors. Now recent findings has found that chemokine signaling and dysregulation of chemokine signaling is associated with many disease, including lung cancer, brain cancer, breast cancer, pancreatic tumors, renal carcinoma, and many other cancers. If you want to get a better outlook of this particular topic, take a look at the review which is pinned in the description. I hope this video gives you an idea about chemokine and chemokine signaling. For more notes and flashcards, follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Links are in the description. You can support our channel using super thanks. You can pay via Paytm, PayPal or UPI. You can follow us on various social media. All links are pinned in the description. See you in next video.